we don't really need CCCM. I mean, we're not going to have camps, right? I mean, camps are just going to be temporary. I think we're going to be okay. Or we, you know, we have like, but isn't that shelter? It looks kind of like shelter. Isn't that what CCCM does? You know, and do we really need it? Or we get called in and go like, oh my God, people in the sites are so angry right now with all the distribution. Can you now come and fix it? You know, or it's kind of like, no, the government doesn't want to talk about camp. I think it's better we don't have a cluster with a name with camps twice in it. So, and and I think we all face this challenge of um, putting or raising awareness on the CCCM framework, what we do and why it's so vital for displaced communities and why it's so important for national and local authorities to have a framework and clear roles and responsibilities on how to work and support people at risk as well as those who've already been displaced, whether it's temporary or it's for protected um, situations. At times it feels like, why should we advocate for us to exist? And, but I think what we're seeing more and more the, from the ISC review um, and you know, from a lot more requests that we're receiving is that more people are understanding what the sector does. The reason this was discussed with, Ga with Maddie is that because in Gaza, CCCM also doesn't exist before. But it was at the request of all the other clusters from shelter, from wash, from protection. It was like, can we have CCCM cluster activated? Because now we're just like all chipping in to try and do what they do. But it would be better if someone who knows and work in this sector come and facilitate all of this. So we say often we turn up because halfway through a response, someone go like, wait, but where are all the sites again and who are in them? And so I think many of you joining us for the first time, you know, welcome to the family. Uh, and I think it's, I hope that this panel is also gonna share with you from like the local perspective of what this has meant for them, how they engage in the CCCM sector and what value they feel that it also brings to how they respond to displacement in their context. Um, we're gonna start, I'm gonna, these lovely people who are joining me, um, very brave of them to come and sit up in front of like, I don't know, 150 people. But before we start our conversation with them, I also want to invite um, Mr. Khaled from, uh, from Marib Governorate uh, in Yemen also who come and talk about uh, his experience as a local authority and the issues he was facing with displacement and how CCCM has also contributed to the way that they work um, in Marib. So Mr. Khaled, if I can invite you up here. So we we have um, a colleague from IOM Yemen also who's going to translate for us. Thanks. طبعا في البداية صباح الخير جميعا بداية أنا أعتذر عن ال عدم القدرة على التحدث باللغة الإنجليزية لغتي ليست ولا بد لكثرة الانشغال لكني بدأت حقيقة في تعلم اللغة الإنجليزية. طبعا أنا اسمي الدكتور خالد ناصر أنا أعمل مساعدة للوحدة التنفيذية لإدارة مخيمات النازحين في محافظة مارب وهذا زميلي ياسر الشميري هو منسق كلستر إدارة وتنسيق المخيمات في محافظة مارب الوحدة التنفيذية هي جهة رسمية إنسانية تهتم بالعمل الإنساني والنزوح في اليمن بشكل عام ومنها محافظة مارب بشكل خاص um, good morning, everyone. Uh, first of all, please accept my sincere apologies for not speaking English, as I am so overwhelmed and I didn't have that much enough time to study more English, but it's one, one of my to-do lists to do. Um, my name is Khaled Nasser. I am uh, the 
manager assistants in the executive unit of the local of the IDPs in Maghreb Governorate in Yemen country. And to my right, my colleague from the subnational CCCM cluster coordinator, Yasser. Uh, the, the executive unit is a humanitarian office that was established in Yemen, and it takes care of the humanitarian work and displacement in Yemen. طبعا بداية نشكركم على دعوتي لحضور هذا الاجتماع الكبير وإتاحة الفرصة للتحدث أمامكم وقبول إشراككم للجهات الحكومية لحضور هذه الاجتماعات لغرض تطوير قدراتهم ورفع مستوى كفاءة أعمالهم وتنسيقاتهم مع الجهات الإنسانية I would like to thank you for inviting me for such a huge event and your acceptance to include the local authorities' sides in such events. I would also like to thank you for having me doing the speech where such events and such speech in globally retreats with freely support and enhancing the capacities and work and coordination of the local authorities and the humanitarian community. اسمحوا لي ان اركز معاكم على نقطتين وهي الاولى نحن نعمل في محافظه مارب والتي تحتوي بداخلها ما يزيد عن 2 مليون نازح وهي تعتبر أكبر موجة نزوح داخلي في اليمن وفيها ما يقرب من 204 مخيما للنازحين وقد ساعدنا حقيقة وجود المنظمات الأممية والدولية والكلسترات على التقليل من حدة الأزمة الإنسانية في المحافظة وساعدنا كذلك تفعيل كتلة إدارة وتنسيق المخيمات في تنسيق الجهود الإنسانية وترتيب عمل الشركاء في المخيمات وخاصة في 97 مخيما للنازحين بينما نازلنا نحن ندير 107 مخيما للنازحين uh, Please do allow me to draw your attention to two points starting with the first one um... We are uh, working in Ma'arib Governorate, which contains the biggest wave displacement wave in Yemen, where two, over 2 million IDPs are living there in uh, distributed 204 displacement camps. The presence of the UN agencies, NGOs and INGOs is definitely supporting us to mitigate and reduce the humanitarian crisis in Yemen. The CCCM cluster presence and its partners are supporting us in covering almost and uh, covering 97 sites that contains the hugest density. Yes, we haven't left the CCCM partners and cluster facing, facing all these challenges alone. We actually support them in a lot of the HLP matters and way other relevant things. أه نحن لا نترك شركاء السي سي ام يواجهون كل التحديات والصعوبات بل بالعكس عملنا مع بعض وقمنا بحل وفضل النزاعات المتحله المتعلقه بالاراضي والاسكان ولدينا فريق أه متطوع مدرب على القدره على التفاوض مع المجتمعات المحليه وبنفس الوقت نقوم ونسعى بتوفير اراضي وعمل تنازلات رسميه لاقامه مشاريع مستدامه على هذه الاراضي so in general, the CCCM cluster and the humanitarian community are not left alone or left behind from us as the local authorities. We do support them in different HLP issues and the conflicts that happens between the host community and the IDPs. We also are identifying lands to, to ensure the accommodation of the IDPs in our context. Uh, وجميع المنظمات الأممية والدولية والمحلية وكذلك الكلسترات ووجود الاجتماعات واللقاءات المستمرة بين جميع الأطراف وآلية التواصل والتعاون والتنسيق والتسهيلات التي ساعدت في اتساع رقعة العمل الإنساني بالمحافظة ووضوح الأدوار بين جميع القطاعات والكلسترات I would really take this opportunity to, to elaborate or to refer to the amazing coordination relationship that we are having among the local authorities and the humanitarian community consists of the UN agencies, international and national NGOs. Uh, within within this relationship and within the repeatedly and continuous uh, meetings and communication channels and good coordination efforts, we have been able to elaborate the roles and responsibilities of each of us and to have a collaboration work uh, filled with coordination and uh, able to access the most vulnerable with uh, assistance delivery. على سبيل المثال نحن في الوحدة التنفيذية بدأنا بالعمل بشكل طوعي وكان عددنا ثلاثة متطوعين في العام 2018. وحاليا تجاوز عددنا 1200 متطوع سواء كانوا في المكتب وفي جميع المخيمات والاحياء 
والحارات وبين أوساط المجتمع المضيف وحتى في المهاجرين واللاجئين وكلهم يعملون بشكل طوعي من خلال الإحساس بالمسؤولية الملقاة على عاتق الجميع Um, for instance, at the executive unit, I remember that we started in 2018, where we were only three volunteers. However, for now, we're almost 1,200 volunteers distributed in the offices, districts, sites, neighborhood, among migrants, refugees, IDPs, all over the places. We are all working very hardly because the responsibility and the accountability that we feel it's on our head. لدينا كذلك في الوحده اقسام وادارات قمنا بانشائها وتدريب المتطوعين والمتطوعات لمساعده الشركاء الانسانيين والكلسترات ومثل قسم الامن الغذائي والزراعه، التعليم، الصحه، الحمايه، المياه والاصحاح البيئي وكذلك اداره وتنسيق المخيمات. بالاضافه الى انشائنا بعض الاقسام التي احتجناها في العمل وهي قسم المراه والطفل وقسم ذوي الاحتياجات الخاصه واداره الطوارئ والانذار المبكر. وإدارة الحلول الدائمة وقسم الأراضي والإسكان وقسم الأمن والسلامة هذه الأقسام تعمل كلها بشكل وثيق مع أطراف المصلحة وهم السلطة المحلية ومكاتبها والمنظمات الدولية والمحلية والكلسترات والنازحين والمجتمع المضيف والمهاجرين واللاجئين In the executive unit we have came up or initiate or create different sectors such as the FSAC, the shelter, the wash, the protection, the women participation, the mothers and children, the HLP sec sectors and different different sectors. These sectors are made there to have a, a full a fluent coordination with their equivalences in the cluster system and the offices of the local the, the, the rest of the offices in the local authorities to ensure a full big image of uh, coordination. لدينا الكثير من المحطات والنجاحات لكن لا يكفي الوقت لعرضها كلها وما تم عرضه هو جزء من الكثير الذي تعمله الوحده التنفيذيه مع جميع الاطراف وخاصه الكلسترات وفي الاخير تحتاج الوحده التنفيذيه لدعم حقيقي وتدريبات نوعيه لتعزيز دورها وزياده خبراتها وهذا يعتبر من توطين العمل الانساني ودعم المؤسسات الوطنيه اشكركم مره ثانيه على اتاحه الفرصه للتواجد بينكم والاستفاده من خبراتكم واذا في اي احد لديه سؤال او استفسار فلا يتردد في السؤال في اوقات الاستراحه او في اي وقت اخر We'd also like to mention that we, uh, as local authorities and as executive unit, we do work side by side within the humanitarian community consisting of the UN agencies, international and national uh, NGOs. As uh, one, one more, furthermore, I would like to say that uh, as a part of the localization, we in the executive unit are in need in unique capacity buildings and trainings to enhance our role and improve uh, its exp the experience, which is a part of the localization, definitely. Uh, I would also like to thank you once again for giving me the opportunity to be here with you, engaging and gaining lots of your uh, amazing experience. And finally, if any of you would have any questions or inquiries, I am super happy to respond to that during the break's time. And uh, thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much, Dr. Khaled, and uh, and also for the great translation um, as well. I think for many of you who are coordinating the CCM cluster, finding the government counterpart in itself can also be a challenge. And, and it's a hit or miss. Sometimes we're put together with the logistics and logistics and procurement part. Sometimes we put with social welfares. And so it's always great to have a, a really good and willing to you know engage uh, with us um uh, people like dr Khaled in uh, in a local government so so now i want to thank these brave three colleagues who've agreed to come and sit up here um for the next hour or so um and and then maybe talk about how they get into cccm and and hear more about their perspective on this. If I can ask for a quick introduction of, from each one of you. Um, hi everyone. I am um, Chase Mutemba from Mozambique. I am a co-founder of um, a local organization 
um, name the group, the Saneamento de Bilibiza. And um, I am excited to be here today uh, to have this opportunity to exchange experience, ideas, and learn from uh, a group that um, uh, is on community engagement. In a, I can say that in a such a high level that uh, as a local organization, I didn't consider how professionally you take this matter. So I'm excited to be here and um, thank you. It's not on, sorry, if I can. Um, morning, everybody. No. Uh, Charlie, there's a, can you, see? yeah. Yeah. Uh, good morning, everybody. This is Hussein Awel from Ethiopia, from National Energy Accord Action for the Needy in Ethiopia, and uh, serving as uh, uh, CCM National Co Coordinator with other uh, UN agencies on behalf of uh, all uh, national NGOs working in the country. Thank you. Okay, um, thank you very much. Uh, my name's uh, Philip John, uh, the founder of uh, Care Aid in Nigeria. Uh, so we are in the CCCM sector. And um, can I ask a very simple question? Do we have national and local NGOs here? If you're here, please, can you wave? Or stand up, please. Okay, yeah, you could stand up as well. <laughs> so um, that's fine. So. Uh, we are here actually together. I'm not sitting here alone, so we are together with you. So feel free to to add up to what we actually do. So uh, Care Aid works in uh, the CCCM uh, sector in Nigeria, uh, in the Northeast, uh, basically. And I happen to be part of the uh, strategic advisory group for Nigeria, representing the national NGO. Thank you. We'll talk more later. Thanks. Um, Hussein, if I can come to you first, if you can share with us a little bit, like how you come to know CCCM. I don't know how far you are aware of Ethiopia. Uh, Ethiopia is uh, a population with uh, more than 100 million uh, and a vast country with vast uh, culture. Since the last uh, four or so years, the displacement uh, happening in the country, especially in the year 2020, where the site management uh, support was initiated uh, uh, because of the conflict in the south part of the country. Then following that uh, performance, the government initiated uh, CCM uh, cluster as a standalone uh, cluster. Uh, at the very beginning, the CCM site management uh, support was implemented by IOM and the UNHCR. There were no uh, 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 national partners implementing CCM or supporting the IDPs as a whole. Then the government looked at uh, the, uh, the seriousness of the issue and initiated the CCM cluster in the year 2021. Uh, then following this initiation, the uh, my organization, Action for the Need in Ethiopia, came to the picture. And uh, I'm uh, fortunate, uh, appointed to uh, co-lead the CCM cluster with IOM and, and uh, uh, UNHCR. Since then, uh, I believe we do a great job uh, with all uh, these guys. Thank you. Um, Philip John, do you, I mean, you also sit on the like the community engagement forum uh, reference group, right? Yes. I mean, how how did you come to to do that? Or okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, once again, um, I would like to applaud the global cluster first of all for incorporating the the localization in the four key uh, uh, points that we highlighted yesterday. Um, this is a great work, um, and we feel uh, we're included in all the process. So 
um for us in nigeria uh uh the government uh, leads the sector we call it sector the cluster and then they are co-led by um IOM and the UNHCR uh, by Mahamat and Irene Mugamba. And um, uh, we have the technical working groups that are represented by national NGOs and uh, other stuff like that. So um, while we work uh, in the cluster the sector, the sector gives opportunity for national NGOs, for national capacity for, for us to participate in the, the sector related activities and uh, 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 meetings and uh, Kristen through her great work uh, identify us through the, the the community engagement activities uh, interesting one that we actually carried out with the community in terms of looking for shelter solution looking for uh, solutions through the community so we actually engage the community in trying to understand okay we've been trying uh, providing shelter doing site improvement doing this doing that how do you feel what do you have what local capacities what are the local solutions that we can leverage on and see uh, you feel better and then for sustainability and then for ownership where you can uh, uh, take a responsibility in terms of uh, maintenance even when there are declines in the overall funding so uh, that uh, we had an interesting project in collaboration with IOM in Nigeria, where we had a community-led project in terms of shelter, looking for shelter solutions, IDPs taking ownership to construct their shelters, we providing technical capacity to them and then to uh, monitoring the activity. And then uh, at some certain point, we support them with materials, roofing materials and other stuff like that. So uh, we actually engage and then we are actually... Um, uh, community uh, driven initiative uh, uh, organization basically so this uh, we engage the community a lot uh, in time of looking for solutions as well so yeah i happens to be the uh, one of the board advisory for the community engagement which is actually amazing with christine yeah thank you yeah Um, Jesse, you also mentioned community engagement as something that's kind of been quite important. But maybe before we get there, because I think you're maybe like a new kind of member of our family for a CCCM. So as a woman-led organization, I mean, how was it for you to get to hear about what CCCM does? Um, well, for me, it was really interesting to kind of learning the work that is being done because I could uh, also understand that um, CCCM take this business very seriously and uh, in a structured way at the extent that um, the interventions are from the beginning sensitive to women issues so i see this as uh, as an opportunity to support better this group and uh, their interests and uh, as well as an opportunity to as a woman led organization as an opportunity to grow and um, to have a uh, chance to have this uh, capacitation on how to address, uh, for instance, uh, gender-based uh, violence, how to mainstream um, gender in uh, each interventions, how to consider um, other minority groups or vulnerable groups such as um, youth, children, because I think the way you were showcasing things, it um, it's embedded from the beginning and from your approach on how to address this. We, at when we do community engagement, of course we consider this. Um, it is entrenched in our organization creation, how we establish it. We do this and um, we try to engage the community to work toward this. And um, I see 
that uh, being exposed to the IOE, MOYO, NHS area um, approach will also help us. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Hussein, a few, like capacity comes up a few times uh, already, even in our short conversation so far. Um, you're also a train trainer, right? For, for CCCM. Like, how was that? And you've done a number of trainings for also for your organization, but also for other CCCM partners. How was that received in, in Ethiopia? Yeah. Uh, the beauty of the CCM is, as you know, uh, it starts with the building the capacity of its partners rather than, than, than directly uh, dive into, into the implementation. This is the opportunity where uh, partners can capacity, uh, develop their capacity in terms of uh, implementation of uh, CCM activities. Uh, following this, uh, uh, my organization got the chance to, to, to uh, build the capacity of its staff. And um, I was one of uh, those staffs and uh, conduct, uh, received a training with a beautiful trainer, which I can always remember. Uh, Richard, please. <laughs> yes. And of course, today he's not with us, Rafael. Mm -hmm. I want to really uh, uh, extend my appreciation for those trainers. Uh, so, they are the one who helps us a lot to stand on two feet and train others. Mm. Uh, 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 it's not only my organization since then. Uh, at the very beginning, uh, my organization was the first uh, CCM partner to implement uh, CCM activities. As of now, we do have like 12 uh, local or national uh, NGOs implementing CCM activities all over the country. And uh, as a core uh, activity, we the moment partners came to uh, the CCM, we are building the capacity to, to those trainers on areas of like uh, human rights uh, 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 principles, site management principles, um, coordination, especially when it comes to coordination for CCM, this is a core activity because it's all, of, all about coordinating the activities of uh, different partners and joint monitoring and engaging uh, different partners so that uh, the challenges can be uh, identified and acted upon. Thank you. I mean, other than the CCCM activities, I'm going to come to you, Philip yeah. John. <laughs> um, there's also like the whole cluster side. And I think that comes with a lot of terminologies and processes and procedures. I mean, how was that for you, or and and also for, or for other local NGO uh, within within your consortium as well to comply or to fulfill the any of the due diligence work required? Okay, um, uh, I will have to link um, my answer to the capacity building as well uh, in in telling you how uh, we we actually comply. So. Um, uh, first of all, I will have to give it up as well to to some interesting people that um, uh, I I they made this whole uh, CCCM not new for us in Nigeria. So uh, we have Caris here, and uh, we have Mika Mugogo. I can see Mr. Pierre Claver. I can see Tapu. Uh, these are uh, and Madi in absence. Yeah. These are people that we've worked closely with, and um, uh, and uh, Irene and Muhammad. Breeze is not here as well. I can remember all of them. So why I can remember them is as a result of um, the skill sharing, okay? The step down, the knowledge, uh, looking at it uh, for sustainability, you know, of a CCCM activity. They are not in Nigeria now, some of them, but uh, we are representing, you know, we think global and then we are acting it local as a result of capacity building in different uh, uh, angles as well. So uh, it made life easy for us, the national actors, to really comply. Of course, you teach someone 
the process and then you know the the person what do you expect the outcome for the person to really scale you know in complying with the process so yeah in in nigeria uh we have this uh capacity building strategy by the sector and then the national ngos are basically the priority first priority in uh in, in providing capacity so there are some uh national ngos you know not only uh, trying to collaborate with the UN agency in time of writing proposals, in time of doing other things. But then now it has got to an extent where a national NGO and a national NGO come together to even get fun. I We are one of them and together with a colleague here, uh, without any collaboration with the UN, we access the, the Nigerian Humanitarian Fund. Uh, we, we work in a Meduguri. So this is as a result of uh, the capacity building and uh, it links to the complying the process, you know, telling us how to go about the due diligence, you know, the participation, the relevancy in the sector, and then the overall knowledge about the, the, the CCCM as well. Uh, so uh, for us in Nigeria, actually, um, localization has already strengthened um, uh, the CCCM effort um, uh, and intervention, which are basically contextual and um, and uh, contextual relevance uh, as well as uh, the implementation. So it's it's really a um, working system in, in, in Nigeria, yeah. Jesse, can I ask, was it similar for you in Mozambique? Um, that may... Well, um, as I said in the beginning, um, we, me, my organization, we are new to CCCM. And uh, I guess uh, so far we had a different uh, trajectory. And um, it's kind of only lately that we got to know CCCM because um, in 2025, when uh, the conflict uh, reduced, um, we were working in Kisanga, which is one of the northern districts of Cabo Delgado, when where we were based. Um, our offices was targeted by the non-state armed groups, and um, we kind of we fled from Kisanga. and we lost everything because the offices and the um, warehouses were burned to ashes. And we went to Pemba, which is the capital of Cabo Delgado province. And there, uh, we found it very difficult to start over as in uh, local organizations. We were also displaced. We lost most of our colleagues. Uh, most of our collaborators and volunteers, some disappeared and we don't know about them so far. And when we reached Pemba, um, some of the people from Kisanga that had the, our contacts, they started reach, uh, reaching out and uh, requesting for support. Some were at the camp, some were at the host communities. Um, in the beginning, in the first six months, we managed to engage and give, provide uh, support on wash, mainly distribu distributing, distributing materials for water treatment. But um, at that moment, we also learned that uh, there was uh, international support coming and we found it very difficult to be part of this uh, response. We even managed to access to the WASH um, cluster. By then we didn't know what were clusters. <laughs> and uh, we managed to do that, but uh, even being there, we realized that we were not linked and maybe the interests of the international agencies that were there were not to work with local organizations, but to see how they could they coordinate the response among themselves. And um, we also learned that the, when requesting res, uh, support to, in, in, to intervene with the communities, they 
most of the time we have this feeling that they were privileging um, private companies. And uh, I, we, of course, understand why, but uh, there was not this linkage to local organizations. And if they were lock, the so-called local organizations, they were not local, local, because there were organizations from the national level, many of them coming from Maputo, they didn't know the reality. Maputo is it's, uh, the capital of the country and it's in the southern region. And in terms of the cultural language difference are very huge. And uh, this is how we felt that maybe if the engagement with the community was done through local, real local organization, it would have been more helpful. Yeah. And we also consider ourselves as a local organization, but we were also display displaced at the sense. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Chessie. Um, Hussein, I mean, I, I was there when we started the CCCM cluster in, in Ethiopia, more or less, or before we start. But like you said, you mentioned there was no national partner in CCCM. So hearing what Chessie is saying, now that you're there as a co-coordinator, like, how do you engage more or how do you welcome other national or local partners to join the cluster as well? I should have warned you that the questions are going to get progressively harder and harder as we go. No, no, no. <laughs> we are leaving, of course, CCM. Uh, you know, uh, we believe that CCM... Uh, uh, is 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 an organization that sh should embrace uh, other partners to, to 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 address the issues of uh, IDPs. Uh, you can you can't or uh, we cannot operate uh, CCM activities by you know uh, two or three three uh, local or international NGOs because of uh, the intensity of uh, the challenges IDPs are facing. Uh, whenever the partners want to engage in in, in uh, CCM, the first thing that they do is they raise a question or file a question request to to national clusters. Then the national cluster undergo a capacity assessment for partners, how they they are uh, what their profile looks like, in terms of staffing, in terms of capacity, and the others. Then once once we decided these partners are are okay, because we do have for that matter we do have a criteria to to select which partners are uh, able to engage in 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 CCM activities. Once we decided, uh, we just plan uh, 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 capacity uh, uh, training for core core CCM uh, uh, training for selected uh, partners for selected staffs so that they can uh, equipped with the principles of CCM and how they are going to uh, communicate with IDP population, with local government, how do they engage in, uh, with, with the whole uh, uh, host communities as well, of course, and how they are able to, to, to coordinate the CCM activities. This is where uh, 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 we we as as uh, uh, national cluster engage uh, other partners by building their capacity at the very beginning, and once they they they, they uh, uh, go to capacity assessment, I mean development, they are given a chance to 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 bid for uh, for HF course. And we are the one to, to, to of course, to, to appraise their projects and decided to, 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 to uh, uh, for, uh, for decision by, by OCHA and others. And the, maybe when it comes to funding from IOM or uh, UNHCR, uh, they are the one to, to, to respond for this one. But when it comes to EHF and a common type of appraisal, where I'm also uh, 
hand on that one to, to, to appraise their projects, whether they are able to address the issues of IDPs or not. Thank you. Thank you, Hussein. I think, um, Philip John, you also brought up the thing about funding before as well, about how you're able to just have even just national or local NGO consortium to access funding. Was that like a challenge? I mean, from, and, and how would you explain to donors outside of the, you know, this international kind of like community based pool fund, or do you have funding from other sources as well? Okay. Um, uh, just to add to the, how uh, national NGOs come together as well. Um, there are actually factors which um, we all agree that uh, UN agencies and uh, that could be a limitation to UN agencies and INGOs in time of operations as well. So the operational limitation should be one of the factor. If uh, there is a displacement, uh, let me give you a scenario, a displacement in community A, and then uh, the, the, there's need for, for the humanitarians to go and support uh, the women, uh, children that are affected. And then we have the UN agency, the national NGO, and then the INGO. So on their way going, of course, maybe something might happen and then due to you know policies and other stuff like that. So it might actually limit the... However, we are flexible in time of uh, approach. So operational limitation is one of the factors that actually attracts uh, national uh, NGOs to join in the unique cluster, that's the CCCM. And then in CCCM, one of the things, because uh, the, the, the cluster coordinators actually made it relevant in the Nigerian um, humanitarian operation to know what we are doing and how we are doing and uh, why we are doing, you know, that made uh, most of the cluster to actually run to CCCM in camps, give us data, give us assessment, give us people that are affected, number of children, this, these are our activity that we do on site. So um, the relevancy actually uh, attracts more of the national NGOs to, okay, wow. So there's a CCCM that is multi-sectoral. When there's no WASH partner, we mainstream, we incorporate WASH. When there's no education, we do. When there's no this, we try to, you know, incorporate them in, in, in we are doing a lot actually. So um, uh, this really attracts, uh, 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 my agency in particular, and then the other agencies, um, the national agencies that are to come to join a CCCM cluster as well. So in terms of funding, at first it was really challenging due to the stringent process. You know, to, to get funding, for example, from BAT, it's like a nightmare to us to get funding from the pool, like the processes and all that. But um, uh, due to some of the capacity building in place. And then um, uh, we advocated through the cluster, like I, I always give it up for the cluster as well. And then uh, Ocha, the localization uh, person, focal person in Nigeria, they're actually doing a great job. So um, uh, like I said, at first it was tough to get the funding, but uh, looking at it through the lens of sustainability and then looking at it through the lens of humanity, uh, we can't go there, but we really need people that are flexible to go there. Okay, how do we how do we do it? Yeah, of course we need to support them technically and we need to support them resources wise. Okay, um, thank you for BHA. I think recently they introduced the RRF project in Nigeria and then we implemented where uh, mostly is the rapid response for emergency. And uh, we had a consortium with the uh, IOM, uh, Aris, yeah. So a lot of work on capacity building on how to go about with the proposals. And, uh, and then finally we had the funding and then we executed the three month and implemented, you know, so, these are capacity building, like I said, uh, skills sharing, stepping down of all this knowledge. And then it has given us access to funding, which led to a national national NGO consortium coming together to even apply funds. But as such, we cannot still um, uh, leave the stone on tone. Actually, there are challenges in, in trying to uh, access other fundings. And then uh, uh, this should be one of our recommendations to see how the the cluster can, can make it uh, a reality to us as well. Uh, yes, so this is, thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, I'm going to come back to each one of you and maybe give you some time to share with the, oh, like the, a lot of people, um, also about how CCCM has also changed the way you work. Um, 
And, and if you have any ask um, for the global clusters that you also want to share as well, before I open the, um, the floor for questions. So Hussein, shall we come start with you? I don't know if I'm understanding really well. Uh, local partners are, you know, better to say national uh, partners. We are not a local because we are implementing all over the country, not a specific area. Partners in Ethiopia, I can say all of them are implementing in different regions. So they are national zones and we call them uh, local. And they are the one to, who able to reach a, a hard uh, to reach areas with less security, less accessibility, and with, of course, uh, little uh, funding. So we have to exploit the, the, that one. The global uh, CCM uh, should exploit this, this the nature of uh, national energy so that uh, more IDPs get benefit of uh, uh, the services we are delivering. Uh, on top of that, uh, uh, CCM partners are mostly, we are the one to reach to the IDPs. Then I can say from, this is uniqueness of us. Uh, other partners, other clusters may come um, at a later stage, like wash, shelter, whatever, whatever. And at the same time, the last to, to, to depart from the IDP sites, even the IDP sites are closed. We, we do uh, managing the sites, conducting uh, 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 intention surveys, and advise the local government either to, to, to close or extend, as my uh, uh, colleague yesterday, Bharat, put it that there is a, a chance where uh, we're able to even uh, change the mind of the local governments and to proceed the existence of with the IDPs. Uh, this is what I can say for. Um, has it changed how you work with local government then by by being with CCM or by being part of the cluster? I mean, if, you, if you want to expand on that a little bit or. Local government? Yeah. Uh, uh, the local governments are, are also uh, closely working with us. Once the, the IDPs are happened in those in local areas, uh, it's not only the uh, local uh, national energies that are equipped with uh, CC CCM uh, for principles. We are also uh, conducting a training for local governments so that they consider the IDPs not as a, as a challenge, but uh, is rather the, 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 the issue of uh, the local government to deal with as far as uh, the IDPs are the citizens of the country, and it's the, they are not the one to be neglected. But they share these ideas, and the, based on our, our, our uh, 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 tremendous you know, continuity the type of uh, discussion with lo local government, followed by uh, CCM principal trainings. And they are the, by this time, I can say they are, the, even if, if the, the national uh, NGOs are uh, facing a, the funding challenges and they leave the area, the local governments will do their best to, to protect the, the IDPs. Thank you. Um, Chessie, anything more you wish to share about your engagement with CCCM and, and the cluster? Well, um, I, I can share more on the expectations um that uh local partners maybe should be considered not only as the entry point because they are already there and they can support uh, your intervention but uh has uh, key partners for even uh, phasing out or making these uh, durable transitions when people go to their areas of origins. And uh, with all this capacity that could have been uh, built during this process, local partners can even be more, more, they have more strength 
to continue doing their work because I see that uh, many of the local partners before the emergency might be doing some, might be doing uh, development work, but even this development work, the way I see how it structures is part of the different clusters. So it's important to, to strengthen and enhance in this potential of the local partners. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Philip, John, do you want to add anything else before we open for some questions? Okay, uh, I, I don't know. Maybe thereafter there will be one for recommendation as well. Yeah, but uh, yes, working in the CCCM cluster has really changed the way we work. Um, unlike other sectors, um, we are also organization for persons with disability, and then we also work in other sectors like cash working groups and other sectors like that. So um, CCCM mostly is driven by the needs and the priority of the affected population. So you have to involve the community in getting to know what their needs are and then how you could just uh, tailor your intervention to supporting them. So working in CCCM actually um, change our mentality and uh, it's, uh, it's just like doing everything. So uh, you know, you get information, you get CFM, you get all sorts of data, uh, wash, uh, everything. No, it, it changes everything uh, about how we work. Uh, uh, and um, in addition, again, uh, linking to working with the government uh, in Nigeria is well structured. Like uh, you go to the states to implement, uh, you have to get access. We don't uh, take over what the government are doing. We complement, you know. So whatever we're doing, we keep them informed and then they grant us access, security, and then uh, uh, the operational support that we need at some point. So uh, the collaborative, you know, uh, the structures there with the the, the lead, uh, the co-lead agencies, the national NGO, the government, it's uh, something to speak about. So it's really working and um, yeah, we, we, we have mostly less challenge in time of that, unless you don't follow the procedures. But uh, yeah, the government are open and then uh, uh, we have the, the opportunity to do that. So, so you talked about ask, is it asking the global quest, uh, cluster questions? We do that later or now? Anytime you want. <laughs> okay, <laughs> probably. How, how long is your list? <laughs> no, it's not really long, just... <laughs> Yeah, so just a short recommendation. So to, what I've put down here is actually um, uh, CCCM is uh, in collaboration with localization is to support uh, the transition to locally led approach. I think uh, we could agree with that uh, to see how we could uh, uh, local uh, led initiatives, you know, uh, it will really help in time of um, solution. And um, also, um, Maybe in some country where they are, you know, they are local NGOs, but they don't know about the CCCM. I think it's an opportunity to create ways for for local NGOs or national NGOs to to come to the cluster and see how they can uh, be engaged as well and and supports uh, looking at it from the sustainability perspective and also a capacity support. Uh, I think in uh, we do even in Nigeria we don't only do the capacity building to the CCCM but other uh, sector members. You know, we invite them to you know build their capacity on what we do. You know, data you can get from us, information about the the exciting CCCM activity you know uh, we have all the information of the particular sites and uh, we coordinate um, um, activities on site so we have some exciting uh, tools that we could help us get some information as well and then uh, the collaboration I recommend also to see how we can do that in terms of uh, skill sharing and then uh, the, the mega one is resource allocation actually so we could do that to support, uh, uh, we are very cost effective, you know, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah, so uh, uh, give us and we'll do it actually. <laughs> so so this is it, I'll, I'll come later to the act, so <laughs> we're good. Thank, thank you very much, uh, Philip, John. Um, we have about 20 minutes 
no, half an hour actually. I think for um to take some questions from from any of you really. So, Emmy, shall we start with you, and and I will come to you. We have uh, other microphones. Hello, it's Amy from CCC Mozambique. Um, first of all, thank you everyone. And it's such a pleasure for me to see Jesse here um, talking. Uh, we work together in Mozambique. Um, I want to ask actually something like a follow up to the last question that one asked. Um, I think oftentimes we have um, tendency to assume the risk appetite of the local organizations in our proposals, or sometimes we put risky places for operation, um, assuming that we will be able to find a local organization that will be um, willing to work in those areas. Um, and you already touched on safety and security issues a bit, and you all work in conflict affected zones. Um, I'm wondering if working with CCCM or clusters or UN agencies change your um, risk uh, perception and puts extra pressure on you in any sense uh, to get more funding, to, to be able to part of the system basically. Um, and what do you need from this um, mechanisms more to support you for um, those kind of uh, maybe challenges? Thank you. Um, should we should we take a few more? I'm going to read out one also from from online as well. Uh, the person said, "I would like to hear from the panels about uh, what are displaced communities saying in their local realities. What's the uh, predominant narrative? What are their main messages and feedbacks to us humanitarians working with displacement contexts?" So, should we take a third question? I think Emmys was reading. I think you put it in more elegantly than than I would have asked about like risk perceptions and and you know increasing. Uh... Thank you. My name is Mohamed El Hadi. I'm the senior cluster coordinator from Nigeria. I have uh, one comment linked with Nigeria operation. I was there for three years and I saw how the local NGOs went from two partners that we support through NHF to more than five or seven now, and it was very good. And also in terms of replacement, the international NGOs like NRC want to move from Maiduguri to other place. The local NGOs, more than eight, they take over. So this is very good in terms of localization and their activities. My second comment to Mr. Khalid, and I'll ask him, I'll ask a question in, in English and then I'll translate to him in Arabic. So he mentioned about the numbers, some of them, 107 from the, gov from the government that they are covering the activities and 97 from the international NGOs. So my question to him, how he managed to find the discrepancy sometime between national uh, authorities taking care about the management of the camps and international NGOs. So this is my question. And Dr. Khalid Suali, like, uh, 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 idarat, uh, khilal, uh, min, min al wa uh, can we can we maybe come to which one of you feel like <laughs> any other question? Okay. Um well from my perspective of a local local organization, I would say that um in terms of uh, support uh, I'm, I'm i'm trying to address emmy's question um i will say that in terms of support um the most in, the most um, important will be capac capacity building and uh, also access to funds capacity building in an extent that we will be able as an organizations to as an organization to train 
uh, our people that uh, and in distant places where we where we cannot reach. For instance, I'm talking about Kisanga, where we are, because we do have people that remain there, although there's this uh, security issue. But if we were able to train them on um, CCCM language, on training them about on uh, how to assess and map the situation and the uh, design and approach of response, this will be helpful. And also if uh, the access to funds for such kind of, of an intervention will be done in a fast way or in a rapid way, I don't think this is the concept, it would uh, also be helpful. And I guess that the CCCM cluster would be would be of assistance in supporting us in this sense. You still have your microphone? I'm not, I lost it. But I, I'm also interested in the part of Emmy's question about, you know, because you talk about having access to areas where international agencies may say, oh, our security brief, you know, like uh, um, procedures doesn't doesn't allow. And then, but does that mean we're asking you to put your staff and your teams more at risk and and whether if that is the only way you can access the funding, then you're pushing the the kind of the risk being exposed as well. You see? Okay. All right. Um so aside from the programmatic aspects of um capacity building in time of proposal and whatever. Um, yeah, to be honest, you know, national NGOs need capacity building institutionally, you know, and um, part of what um, IOM and uh, other partners are doing in Nigeria is to come to your office, uh, ask for some certain document, like see some opportunities to develop policies, risks, analysis on how to go about. So accessing the funding, like I said, we think global and then we act local. So uh, in accessing the funding, we are not actually pushing ourselves to, to risk. Why? If that community, A, if for instance, an UN agency can't go there, you know, transferring the risks to a local NGO, we have our own approach. We can go um, community-based staff from there if we can access, you know, there are approaches that we could use, deploy in place to actually ensure that we deliver assistance. So uh, looking at that again, the, um, the likelihood of, you know, rigs and other stuff like that have been addressed and um, they strengthen the institution, the organization. We have like uh, in the inception, we don't have quite a number of policies, but um, now with the capacity building, the rigs analysis, okay, if today you're going to community A and then this happened, attack, how do you need to deliver, you know? Okay, then, okay, this is our strategy and other stuff like that. I wouldn't say it here. Maybe we could have a chat later so that we could talk. But then these are some of the approaches we, we apply in terms of uh, 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 our operations uh, related to, to rigs. So uh, uh, I don't know, maybe there are other national energies that can contribute. But but in addition to the second question, you talked about feedback. Um, we receive, as CCCM, we receive feedbacks through the mechanism in place and on sites and then uh, other things. So most of the feedbacks is engage us, engage the community, engage the community, engage the community. It makes life easy. It makes your project uh, go well in terms of uh, acceptability, uh, you know, implementation. So the feedback is engage us, okay? You can, um, from the assessment program proposal, engage the community. So when you engage the community, you know, you have it also, that is uh, majorly the feedbacks we're getting uh, from our sides. Yeah, thank you. Just to add on, what my friend said is that when it comes to uh, uh, funding and and I mean uh, working with the community at very grassroots level, we are not of course compromising the safety of our staff. Uh, rather, we look at different approaches like working with with uh, grassroots 
uh, organizations like uh, women organization, youth organization in those uh, particular areas, or through religious uh, organization with churches, with, with, with mosques, depending on the area. Uh, we are not uh, on top of this. We also uh, recruit staffs from uh, those areas so that they can talk the same um, language, share their uh, culture and uh, other other uh, practices. Uh, they, they feel they are not, um, I mean, uh, treated from um, other body that came from uh, different areas so that we can uh, easily implement the CCM activities. Uh, this is one. Uh, uh, when it uh, comes to the, the second question that I, I feel that you, the, how the IDPs consider uh, uh, CCM, or, uh, for me, uh, really, they, they consider uh, CCM not as partner, rather as friends, because uh, we are always there. Uh, if you take the other other partners, for instance, food, they distributing food. Then after a month, or uh, come back after a month or two, we are every day managing the site, hearing the the, the challenges of the IDPs, live the, the, their life, and share their their concerns. At the end of the day, uh, whenever they feel the challenge from like different clusters, wash, shelter, and other things. They came to us and uh, talked to us to, no, we lack uh, jerichals. We lack uh, our, our shelter is good. Roofing is taken by wind. Uh, uh, these all things are come to us and they will try to link those those, those uh, issues to different uh, uh, clusters as well. Uh, I Even I myself consider, are we a CCM cluster or are we uh, representing OCHA? Uh, this is always my question, really. Thank you. Are you going to get me into trouble? <laughs> please answer. <laughs> yes, please. I will talk in, in French. You can take your... Alors, je vais poser ma question en français. C'est peut-être... Uh, je suis Justine Adédé. Je suis du, la coordinatrice du cluster... Uh, CCCM au, au Burkina Faso, en Afrique uh, de, de l'Ouest. Alors, chez nous, au niveau du Burkina Faso, on a une autre expérience avec uh, les organisations locales. Uh, elles font plus le développement et c'est maintenant que ces organisations sont en train de revenir sur l'humanitaire. Donc, elles nous demandent aujourd'hui des formations sur uh, des questions de l'urgence, comment on gère l'urgence. Alors, vous qui, êtes, uh, vous qui êtes déjà à ce niveau, qui avez commencer à avoir cette expérience. Quel conseil pouvez-vous donner pour ne pas que nous soyons en train de faire euh, des choses qui ne soient pas productives? Comment maintenir les organisations locales dans le développement, même si elles sont en train de répartir un peu vers l'urgence? Vers Comment garantir qu'elles vont continuer après à faire leur développement? Quelles seraient pour vous les orientations que vous pouvez nous donner? et que nous ne soyons pas en train de créer des monstres pour demain. Donc, euh, voilà un peu euh, la question que je pose. C'est tellement que dans la salle, il y a des, aussi des expériences pour nous aider à maintenir les organisations locales dans leur rythme de développement et non de les ramener dans, dans l'urgence. Merci. Uh, thank you uh, for the uh, interactive session. So uh, we heard more about uh, uh, Jose from Hussein and Khalid that how they found CCCM and how it helped and uh, had uh, great impacts. I want to hear like uh, more if they uh, specifically Khalid or Hussein if uh, they can provide some examples from humanitarian responses previously. Uh, uh, like uh, where there was lack of CCCM involvement and what were the missed opportunities and uh, that they have now the with the CCCM and uh, 
what were the significant challenges. So thank you. And by the way, this is Asadula from Afghanistan. We'll just take one, there's a gentleman in front of, yes, if we can just take one more question and then we'll do a, a round of answers. Hello, I'm Milan. Um, uh, reach focal point for Sudan, focal point for CCCM. So um, it is, I do, I do think uh, the, the mere presence of sites within a particular community creates uh, enormous weight and challenges uh, for the resources of those communities. And it is uh, likely to create uh, some animosity between the host community and the IDPs. Uh, also interventions like cash transfers are likely to drive prices up and all the like. I don't know if there is any, if there is any strategy within your operational framework to preempt some of these uh, likely issues that uh, might arise as a result of sites uh, within specific communities. Thank you. Yeah, let me start. Um, well, I will talk from the perspective of an organization that was primarily working on development. And um, to say that uh, we see humanitarian or emergency work as an uh, opportunity for growth. And um, I say opportunity because um, it's also important to see as a chance that if an organization, for instance, was working on WASH or was uh, specified on or targeting uh, women's rights, when uh, an emergency event comes and they are involved and uh, they learn how to respond past and, and or how to work using the humanitarian language. It's an opportunity to keep assisting their community because even um, with, uh, if uh, the situation is uh, ended or the camps are uh, phased out, the development organizations continue working in the field and continuing supporting its community. And uh, if a similar event comes again, they don't have to learn everything uh, from scratch. They know how to do it, how to address. So I see this as an opportunity and uh, an opportunity to also reinforce they are working the 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 their operational area if you are working on wash and you are able to give a, a response in any humanitarian scenario on wash this means that you have been strengthened and as an organization Okay, even when I did not get that French part, but we'll still come back. So in, in response to the last uh, person that asked the questions, um, in whatever intervention we do, we ensure that do no harm is there, you understand? So in the area-based approach where IDPs are within communities, so how do you intervene and then ensuring a lot of things. So I'll, I'll actually love to have a chat if you, but then our integrated programming supports even peace building, you know, within communities as well. So um, if there's an existing borehole in a community where we have pockets of IDPs within, uh, we cannot say we would not really support if our programs are really flexible, we could um, through the integrated programming, uh, you know, rehabilitate the borehole now our target primary target is the idps and then the community as well so you see there won't be any issue idp can have access to water community so uh, uh, our program actually you know is multi-sectoral so it uh, it promotes a lot you know have a big component of the peace building of the you know so there are a lot. So that's it's just an example and on how we go about ensuring um coexistence between the IDPs and community and then um um 
the, the community itself. And then we do uh, initiate this monthly meeting, you know, area-based LCG, local coordination meeting, you know, by, by Orchard. And then we see how those communities and IDPs come. We share, uh, you know, experiences if there are other gaps, you know. We might not really have everything to do, but uh, one of our stronger component is advocacy, you know. So we try to, where there are gaps that we can't, we advocate. So these are some few uh, things we do in that aspect. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I know a few questions also went to Dr. Khaled as well. I don't know if you wish to address now or if he wants to re respond to some of the questions first. Sorry, I, I do see a number of questions coming as well. طبعا السؤال الذي سأله الأستاذ محمد طبعا موضوع الذي هو الخدمات أو العمل تنسيق ما بين 97 مخيمة للنازحين وما بين 107 طبعا حنا نتمنى أن يكون هناك تغطية لجميع المخيمات بإدارة تنسيق المخيمات لأنه هذا بيساعدنا بشكل كبير جدا رفع الاحتياجات ومتابعة جميع المجريات داخل المخيمات نظرا لقل التمويلات الإنسانية لم تقدر المنظمات إلا على تغطية 97 وتبقت 107 نقوم نحن بإدارتها عملنا يرتكز على موضوع تقييم الاحتياجات ورفع البيانات والأوضاع الحالية ثم موضوع الذي هو تطوير القدرات وبناء قدرات اللجان وتشكيل اللجان من النازحين أنفسهم تدريبهم تدريبات يعني جهود ذاتية طوعية لكن بينقصنا الكثير من الخدمات نعمل على موضوع الإحالات نقوم بإحالة جميع الاحتياجات على جميع القطاعات الإنسانية في الصحة والتعليم والمياه وغيرها ونتابع كذلك مكاتب السلطة المحلية مثل مكتب الصحة مكتب التربية وغيرها لتوفير هذه الاحتياجات المنظمة الشغالة في السبعة وتسعين لديها يعني جهود خاصة في موضوع تقليل المخاطر وموضوع الذي هو الصيانة خدمات الصيانة ورفع القدرات وبناء قدرات العامل هناك نحن نعمل مثل عملية الرفع لكن لا يوجد لدينا دعم أو تمويلات نقدر على ضوءها تغطية احتياجات هؤلاء النازحين وإنما نقوم بعملية يعني سد الفجوة ومتابعة الجهات حتى يقوم بتغطيتها شكرا um, For the question of uh, how do we do with the 107 sites that are not covered by CCCM partners unlike the 97 sites well, uh, we, we we do wish that all the CCM partners could be able to cover all the sites in, in, in Ma'rib. However, uh, within the lack of uh, funding, they're not able, of course, to cover all the sites. Uh, our support in the, in the in the unmanaged sites, we support in raising the needs, in monitoring the situation, monitoring the displacement movements there. And we also managed to create uh, community committees and build their capacity as possible as we can. Uh, we do training, we deliver trainings for them, and we also conduct referring cases, whether through the local authorities' offices or to the our equivalences in the humanitarian community, such as the cluster coordinators and other agencies as well. So uh, with the most, uh, as, as raising objectives, we do referring, we do creating of community committees and training them. We do monitoring and uh, referral cases finally. Thank you. Uh, for the second question that was coming from uh, Mr. Asdallah Wright, Afghanistan. Yeah, uh, could you please repeat it? So, uh, as we heard a lot about uh, uh, the importance of CCCM and how uh, Khalid uh, explained that they ha how they explored CCCM and how it has a great impact currently on the humanitarian responses. So I was just asking like uh, previously while they were not, uh, they didn't explore the CCCM before that, what were the missed opportunities that now the CCCM has uh, a, gr a great impact and they have the great opportunities to uh, consider the CCCM and implement their activities accordingly? I translate to him in 
مش دولة بس يوم خالص كيف كان الوضع وإيش الأشياء بالضبط اللي استفدتوها أول ما جس سين كيف قدر يغير السياق كيف لاحظتوا من السياق يغير إيش الحاجة اللي أضافها من الناحية الإيجابية طبعا قبل عمل السي سي ام ودخول السي سي ام سواء كانت الكلاستر الكتله او حتى شركاء السي سي ام كان الحمل اللي ملقاه على عاتق السلطه المحليه وكان يحصل هناك بعض التلخبطات كذلك في ازدواجيه في موضوع التدخلات وتكرار للمساعده الانسانيه حتى يعني بعض المنظمات تعمل كانت بشبه مزاجيه في في العمل هذا كان يؤدي الى كلكلات يعني كانت بعض المخيمات فيها خدمات كثيره وفيها تدخلات ومساعدات عديده وبعض المخيمات محرومه من ابسط التدخلات خاصه المخيمات التي كانت قريبه من مركز المدينه كان يوجد فيها تدخلات كبيره وكانت المنظمات مركزه عليها مثل عمليه تسويقيه يعني فقط لجلب الدعم لكن مع وجود الكلسترات ووجود السي سي ام قمنا بتنظيم الاعمال وقامت المنظمات بعمل اجتماعات صحيح واجهنا صعوبات شويه في بعض المؤسسات المحليه في عدم التزامها بالتنسيق الانساني لكننا الزمنا جميع الشركاء الموجودين يعني في مارب بان يكونوا تحت ظل القطاعات الانسانيه وان يكون في تنسيق مع الكتل اول باول هذا ساعدنا طبعا في اولا وضوح الاحتياجات ومتابعه المنظمات ومنع ازدواجيه التدخلات وتركيز على الفئات الاشد احتياجا وفي نفس الوقت رفع مستوى يعني تقارير المعلومات يعني قدر المانحين يعرفوا اين هي الفجوات اين الشركاء موجودين ماذا عملوا ما هي الفجوات المتبقيه هذا ساعدنا بشكل كبير على ترتيب الوضع الانساني في المخيمات ولكن لا زال الاحتياج يعني حقيقه لا زال احتياج كبير جدا والمنظمات الموجوده عملت جهود ممتازه مشكوره عليها لكن لا زالت فجوه الانسانيه كبيره جدا خاصه مع تراجع الدعم الانساني والتمويل لليمن Um, th- thank you for the question. Uh, before the CCCM comes, actually, and before we start, uh, CCCM start approaches uh, its intervention. I'm speaking as a cluster and as a partners. The all the responsibility was on us as local authorities and executive unit, which was pretty hard for us as we our capacity wasn't on that level yet. So the issues that we were facing. For example, for instance, we're like overlapping in the interventions among the humanitarian community itself, uh, having unfair delivery of assistance where some of the sites used to have a lot of services and others were just left behind, especially the sites in, in the middle of the city used to be covered because it's easy for the, the humanitarian actor to go into the city and deliver service and take some pictures for that. Uh, some some also some some national organizations we were facing a lot of challenges with with them while their capacity wasn't that uh, big to 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 start understanding the matter of the import or the importance of co- participating in coordination meetings and in collaborative work however once the cccm arrived we start uh, supporting them and pushing the national partners, pushing everyone to participate in their uh, coordination meetings and in their coordination system in general, which has led to uh, clarifying the interventions by everyone, avoid overlapping, and uh, finally demonstrate the roles and responsibilities of each and every actor in the humanitarian and local authorities community. Uh, I, I also, I would like to note that needs are still there, And with, within the funding shrinks in Yemen, uh, we're not able, neither us nor the humanitarian community, we're not able to cover all the needs. Needs remain there, huge. And we are still working on advocating for, for funds and working side by side on this with the humanitarian community. Thank you. Okay. Can I? Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. I would like to talk a little bit about uh, local association. It is like uh, we are forgetting about uh, the local association comparing to local organization because they are not registered only. They are not registered, it's why we are not considering them. But uh, in fact, they are a strong organization at the local level. Uh, For example, when we are listening to the case of Mozambique, it said that Organizations are moving from the south to the north, but in reality, they are foreigners. 
they are not really from that location. They have a language barrier, et cetera, et cetera. So local associations are very important also. When you go to villages, particularly in Africa, uh, the villages are well organized. They have the chief. We have the a female association, teachers association, parent association, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So there are some uh, structures on the ground at the local level, which CCCM can rely on and do better their activities. Thank you. Thank you so much. And one last one from Pierre Cover. Yeah, thank you, Juan. Um, we are talking about uh, localization. And um, one of the challenge that we have is access to funds and uh, also uh, to fund yourselves. Hmm? So what are the mechanism that you, uh, the local NGO put in place to fund themselves and not and go beyond the fund received from UN agencies and uh, other donors? Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm going to ask, maybe consider that question also, but I'm going to ask our um, fireside chat members um, to maybe also share some final thoughts as well um, as, as you consider this. Um, before I do that, I think RRF was mentioned a couple of times. This is the rapid response funding mechanism. Um, if you wish to to look up further, there's some colleagues here who also have worked uh, a lot with this mechanism. Um, it's a funding mechanism from BHA. So, um, so Jesse, you want to start us final round? Okay. Well, uh, <laughs> my closing remarks will be of uh, gratitude uh, for this opportunity that is given to us to voice the interests of our communities and that um, I hope CCCM uh, in the future continues with this vision and uh, considering that their work is relevant because and for the people. So I hope you keep that in your future hand of us. Thank you. Uh, yes, uh, fund, fund, funding is a, a great challenge for humanitarian partners, including including the national NGOs. Or our source was, you know, EHF, IOM, RRF Associate, and in some cases, uh, uh, different uh, donor agencies. Uh, now, nowadays, the 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 the, the, clo the door is, uh, if not closed, it is very narrow to 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 uh, get it or to exploit. Uh, even though, even though uh, in Ethiopia, uh, localization came into picture and uh, the local NGOs are given a chance to exploit like thirty percent of. Uh, the, the the humanitarian funding uh, need to be a, a, for a national NGOs. In practice, nowadays uh, is getting uh, very low, even though uh, the, our effort is is still there. Uh, but the same thing is coupled by, in our case, the government is already pushing for for returnees and re relocations. Meaning that uh, the IDP case load is is to some extent is getting uh, reduced, uh, so that uh, by the same proportionate, the funding we are looking is also uh, getting reduced. Uh, however, uh, thanks to the localization, we are uh, even able to 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 get uh, those thirty percent or the. Uh, uh, National CCM partners are, to some extent, still on board uh, in in very uh, hard to reach areas. Uh, I think that that is what I can say, and uh, we are proud of, of course, proud of uh, uh, what we are implementing so far. Uh, uh, in terms of protecting the IDPs, in terms of assisting the IDPs, 
for like two to uh, three years. And then now uh, it's natural to get at some point uh, uh, shortage of fund is wherever in the globe. Uh, this is what I'm saying. All right. Um, thank you for the last chance. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, first, uh, to the colleague over there regarding uh, the registration, I think um, the donors or agencies um, actually recognized registered um, organizations uh, to actually partner with them and um, to see opportunity in building their capacity uh, as in the case of Nigeria as well. So there are processes. First is your registrations and um, sectors, clusters, presence, and then activities, and then your financial auditing, and as well as a lot of things like that. So when you don't have that, you try to go and look for places where uh, such, but however, it's still a recommendation for for us that are here to see how we could actually encourage the national actors from not going to such places, but rather stay and register and then um, see how they can work and support the community as well to actually mitigate the, the challenges faced on the other side in terms of uh, barriers and other stuff like that. So it really helps a lot. So um, um, so uh, the, the, the solution is basically lies within that uh, country, country-based solutions that will help a lot. Um, uh, secondly, in coming to Mr. Pierre's uh, question, yeah, at first for a national organization to be within the cluster, or for you to the startup is quite tough to see how um, um, you can operate as well. But first, while um, identifying with the sector, aside from getting funding from the donors, yeah, there's um, other private sectors, self contributions from you know, and then volunteering, uh, you know, those are some things that we do in order to keep ourselves relevant in the sector and to see how. Um, from the success of our implementation, how we could use such to really advocate for funding. So those are some modalities we do in terms of seeing how we can self-fund ourselves. Kiaid in Nigeria self-fund itself for like two years in the sector and the sector give out uh, stockpiles of items. You know, those are some strategic way of testing how accountable you are and, uh, you know, give you items, go and distribute, you know, so you do that, you fund the logistics and then you go do them and come back with results, pictures, movies and other stuff like that. So that kept us relevance and then, uh, okay, yeah, fine. So what do you have? There are issues there. We raise assessment reports and then the sector see how the component of resource mobilization really flagged and then uh, we get um, estimated support so th that is it uh one so then the last uh, yeah yeah so um the, the the acts that you mentioned earlier from from last year i think uh, the global sector uh, the cluster are actually doing well in terms of seeing uh paying attention to localization which is very good and then i think i have from the last year some key notes that i take uh one um you know, it's, uh, you, nice you know, they scary. talked about flipping, flipping the chart to actions. So one of it, uh, the system in place at the global level, I think it's a localization tax force. So maybe it would help us to see how uh, uh, one and uh, the, the second uh, is the, the thematic working group, actually. I think from the findings of last year, it, it has been captured and then the, the, the last one I think I still have here, we had a discussion that revolves around uh, supporting localization from the country base and uh, the global uh, uh, cluster as well. So for, for Nigeria, I think it's a, a work in action, it's working. And for other countries, now I'm not speaking on myself. Yeah, you know. So for other countries like, uh, you know, Mozambique, you know, that we can reach out to them having this um, a representation that deals with different countries and you know, so it could really help a lot lastly okay i think yeah uh, last year we had a very interesting time with uh, the donors present uh, at the retreat in geneva and then 
we share a lot of things and, uh, and they're happy to see us in uh, in the conference and uh, that give uh, that motivate us to actually go to their site and always check in the, the the call for funding and other stuff like that so it's really good we recommend uh, to to see how more of the capacity or more of access to funding at the global level to the country level we actually uh, go a long way. We, we we even created a WhatsApp group. I think I have friends now from uh, uh, Yirga from Ethiopia, Yakzan from, uh, yeah. you know, so we, we have our own WhatsApp. So it's like getting bigger. We share experiences. Uh, what do you do there? What do you do there? So we have a mini, so it helps us in time of understanding what we are doing or what is happening on the other side. So thank you. Right. Oh, yes. We're definitely gonna count on your support to make to make these things happen. Um, if I think I'll just just on the funding, if you also haven't talked to our um, diaspora engagement colleagues, I think it's also a great opportunity to uh, explore different kind of support um, as well and and engagement and and other channels um, as well. Um, so just to close and and thank you. I feel like, you know, for reminding us what we promised last year that we haven't done, um, we will definitely get on it, but I think we're going to come back to you uh, for, for support there as well. Um, I want to just in closing, I, I want to thank um, our panel members, also Dr. Khalid and, and our colleagues for, for the translation, but I know they just represent all the other um, national and local partners that we have, whether you're here or you're joining us online or you're just um, you know, doing your work in, in the country. I mean, your strength inspires us, I think, to do what we're doing. Um, and I wanna do like a big shout out to all the trainers sitting here and joining online and in other places in the world. I think you make all the difference. And I think CCCM is such a special sector that, you know, our biggest commodity are the people in it. And I think the trainers, and I think it's not surprised that people remember who their trainers were, because I think you make such a difference to how they're responding to displacement. So a big thank you and a big pat on your back from me. Thank you. Thank you.